Hello everyone, my name is Milan Josran. I worked at Collabora since January and I will try to demystify Linux kernel init calls. First, an introduction with the purpose of init calls and how to debug them. Init calls have been implemented early in Linux kernel development around version 2.4. There is no big changes since, except in 2018, with the tracing support added by Stephen Rosdett. We will see an example of how to trace init calls in the next slide. But first, what is the purpose of init calls? The purpose is to allow you to call functions at different stages during the boot process. For that, you can find helpers that define the stages. For example, you have pure init call, core init call, post core init call, and others. Here, it's the distribution in last v5.8 kernel uh, of the different init calls used to define functions. You can see that the most used is subsys underscore init call and also arc init call and um, device init call. So now let's see at an example. We create a simple function foo underscore init that is just returning zero. For this, for this example, we declare it using post core init call helper. Thanks to that, this foo init function will be executed at the post core stage. In fact, using init calls, it's like marking the execution of a function at a specific level of your boot uh, of your kernel. That's why the name of the helpers try to reflect the order of the execution. For example, post Post core init call function will be called after core init call once. About uh, debugging init calls, it has been introduced in version 2.5. Um, in fact, you just have to put init call underscore debug keyword in your command line. You will have to you will have sorry you will have debug information printed on your console. And as you can see, for each init call, you will have two lines printed, one for its start and another one for its end. Thanks to that, you will be able to know the time spent on its execution. And this is a nice information to have if you have to perform some boot time improvements, for example. The issue with that is that it increases the boot time during your debug because all these functions uh, declared by all init call level will print in these uh, two lines. So you will have a lot of stuff printed on your console and that make your boot time increasing a lot. Um, moreover, it's difficult to retrieve specific data from it as it's printed on your console. Uh, this uh, point are improved by using ftrace. Uh, here it's an example on how to do that. So first you mount debugfs. Um, then in tracing folder you can retrieve the available events to trace. Uh, you can see that there is uh, three events for init calls, start, finish and level. And then in your command line, you will have to add trace underscore event keyword and you put uh, all the different events you want to trace. In our case, uh, we will trace the three ones. And then you open the trace file and you will get all information about all init calls. And you can check also the time execution of each one. And this is nice because you can also use tools to filter, such as uh, grape and so on. 
So now we will focus on the implementation of init calls. We will see the general implementation, different stages of uh, ordering, the execution of function declared, and finally how modules are handled. Before starting, a short disclaimer. You will need some ELF understanding and I'm definitely not an expert on both subjects. So you will, I will do my best to answer your question after my presentation. I put some interesting resources about ELF and particularly if you are a visual learner like me, I recommend you to have a look at drawings from Korkami that I really liked. Okay, so let's see the implementation of init calls. All the definition will be in include slash Linux slash init editor. You will find the helper definitions such as pure init call, core init call, post core init call, arc init call, and so on. All init calls are using the same um, define underscore init call definition, but you can see there is only one difference, the last parameter. For next slide, we will use the post core init call for many examples, but keep in mind that it will be the same for another init call, only the ID is different. Define underscore init call function uses two parameters, the name of the function we want to execute at this level, and the ID which represents the order of your init calls. Let's see that in our simple example. As we just saw before, post core underscore init call is defined using a define underscore init call function. If we try to expand that to our example, it means that the function name will be foo underscore init and the ID will be equals to two because we choose an post core init call. Let's look at the definition of define underscore init call. In fact, it's defined by another define underscore init call definition, which has a third parameter. This third parameter uses the ID parameter. It will be uh, the concatenation of the string dot init call and the ID of the init call. Because we choose a post core init call, the third parameter in our uh, case will be dot init call two. If you change it to a core init call, for example, it will be dot init call one because the ID of core init call is one. And what about this last define init call? We will look closer at this definition in next slides, but we can see that the third parameter is named sec. So let's see this final definition in it call um, function. It's still using the function name as first parameter, so foo underscore init for our, our example. The ID as a second one, which equals two for post core. And the third one is a section that will be used in the object file. In our case, it will be dot in equal two, as I said before. Let's try to see what this colorful definition is doing. As seen before, the parameters will be foo in underscore init because it's the name of our function, two because we used the post core helper, and dot in equal two. The next line is creating an init call underscore t type variable name according to the parameters. It's underscore underscore init call underscore, then the function name and then the ID. We will see in next slides what attribute and section keyword are doing, but at least it's concatenated the sec parameters with another string init. And all this init call underscore t will be equals to our function name. So what it's doing, in fact, it's creating an init call underscore t entry 
name underscore underscore init call underscore foo underscore init, which is the name of our function two. And so this is uh, the, using the function name and the ID. For the attributes section, it's uh, naming an object file section. And as we have seen before, it will be uh, the third parameter plus init call, in, init, sorry, uh, string. So it will be dot init call to dot init. We can, we can retrieve that uh, using object dump on the kernel object file. You can see that there is a section uh, dot init call to dot init pointing to uh, init call underscore foo underscore init to. To sum up, define underscore init call is creating a section in the object file specific to the init call used um, that will be different according to the ID and this will point to an entry that is a link to our function. We can retrieve all the sections for this particular level by looking at all dot init to dot init section. We could do the same for core init call by filtering to dot init call one dot init. Um, notice that the addresses of all sections are following each other. Uh, we will see later uh, why it's important. So we have seen general implementation of init calls. Let's see uh, how ordering of init call is done. First, we will be looking at a specific level. So how all function using postcore helper will be ordered between each of those. Um, you will see by example that it's depending of the order in make files. So let's try to see that using an example. Let's create two RTC drivers, one called my driver and the other one my other driver. We choose RTC subsystem, but you could use, you could, uh, use whatever other sub subsystem you want. In my driver, we create a function called my driver underscore func. And in my other driver, we create my other driver underscore function that is using postcore init call helper for both of them. In the first case, we will put my driver first and then my other driver in the make file. If we look at the result of the compilation, the section in the object file is ordered by my driver and my other driver. We can see that the address of my other driver function is after the one from my driver. And if you boot this kernel with debug information, you will get my driver function executed before my other driver function. Let's be sure that it's not because of the alphabetic order and let's switch the order in the make file. So my, dri my other driver will be compiled first and my driver will be the next one. In the object file, the sections are inverted. My other driver function got the same address as my driver function during our first case in the example. So in fact, uh, the, in the section, my other driver is the first one and then you have my driver function. And again, if you add debug information at your boot, um, while you're booting your kernel, my other driver function will be the first one executed and my driver function will be executed right after it. Now that we have seen the ordering for all functions at one level, so in our case it was post core, we will see how the kernel is ordering all the init calls against each others. We already seen one little int the ID of init calls, but we will look uh, deeper on that. All the magic is done in init slash main.c. 
which is pretty cool to have a look at this file in the kernel, right? Um, this file hosts an um, init call underscore levels array. This array has entries called init call um, something underscore start. Most of the time, the something uh, between, in, between init call and underscore start is a number, but there is an exception for WTFS. I will not talk uh, about uh, this specification in this presentation, but I wrote a blog post. Um, if you want to look at it, uh, you will find the answer on how WTFS is uh, handled. Anyway, um, each entry of this array is a pointer to a particular level. As you may imagine, it will be linked to the IDs of init calls. Many of the magic is done using linker script. The kernel has a linker header that is creating entries depending on the level. At the end, you will have for each level an init call something other store underscore start entry that will point to the first address of a section depending of the level. So for example, in post core init call, the ID is equals to two. So you will have init call two underscore start entry and it will point to uh, the section depending of this level. So for example, for a level equals to two, init call two underscore start entry will point to the first address of the section dot init call to dot init. And we already talked about it. If you remember, define underscore init call was creating this uh, section name into the object file. And this is where the kernel stores the order of each uh, init call levels. So now we have seen how the order of init calls between each others is done. Everything is based on an array. And for each level, functions are ordering by the make file. So now we will see how our foo underscore init function will be executed and all the code behind init calls, because so far we have seen pretty much only definitions. In the main file, we will find a do underscore basic underscore setup function that is calling an interesting function called do init calls. This do init calls is using the array we saw before, doing a for loop on it. It means that this function is calling all the init call level one by one. So first the pure init call with its ID of zero, then the core init call with its ID of one, and so on. A function do underscore init call level is then called for each level. This do init call underscore level function is once again performing a for loop. It's using the array, but for a particular level now. So the level we are, we are uh, uh, using um, from the uh, previous for loop. The type of fn variable is an init call underscore entry underscore t. It will be the first address given by the entry underscore underscore in equal to underscore start, which means, if you remember, it's the first address of the section dot in equal to dot init. The loop will then iterate on all the addresses for all the section dot init to dot init, thanks to the linker script we have seen before. So let's Use an example to understand the value of this fn variable. We have the code uh, here and the object dump output for some postcard functions. What will be the different values of fn during the iteration in the for loop? In the first iteration, fn will have the first address of the section dot init call to dot init. So it will be equivalent to zero. And in our example, it's pointing to an atomic underscore pool underscore init function. It will be the parameter of the function inside the loop. Um, it, the function is named do one init call. 
On the next iteration, fn will be incremented, so fn++ in the for loop. It means it will point to the next address, uh, which equals 4, and it points to an entry named mvbu, mvbu sorry, uh, underscore sock underscore device. And on the third iteration, fn will be equal to the next, next address, 8. That will be a coherency late init entry. It will continue this uh, iteration until it reach the next level, and then it go back to the above loop. So all fn values are passed to one function, do one init call function, and let's have a look at uh, this function. This do one init call function is uh, performing two main uh, actions, let's say. It starts and finish the tracing function, and also it's uh, executing the function we created so far. So now uh, we have seen all the implementation um, and all the code in the kernel. I will try to summarize it uh, and see, try to summarize all we have seen uh, so far. So we have our two drivers, my other driver and my driver, with their functions, my other driver underscore func and my driver underscore func. They both use post core and equal helper. In the make file, we add these drivers for the compilation. Post core helper is defined in include slash Linux slash init uh, header, as we have seen before. This helper is in fact defined by two define init calls function having an ID of two. The last define underscore init call is creating a section in both object file um, of the drivers. So you will have my other driver dot o and my driver dot o and each one will have uh, the section dot init two dot init. Then these object files are grouped into the big object file uh, of the kernel, vmlinux.o. Um, thanks to the order in makefile, the section that we find in this final object file will be ordered by, uh, by this makefile. So you will have my other driver underscore func followed by my, my, my driver underscore func, sorry. In init slash main dot c, um, we find an array that order init codes levels between each other by creating uh, an entry for each level. Um, the, this entry in this array is called uh, init call to uh, underscore start for post call. You find the do basic setup function. This function is calling do underscore init calls using the above array. With a for loop on each level, it's calling another function named do underscore init call underscore level. And this function is calling all level specific functions thanks to the array and the function pointers. And finally, do one init call function is executing the different function created in our uh, drivers. This function, do one init call, is also printing debug information if we boot uh, this kernel using the debug command line keyword. So at the end, we will have our two functions executed at post core level because we use post core helpers between different other uh, functions um, that can be in the different uh, drivers and the order will be depending on the make file. And once all post core init calls has been executed, it will go to the next level. So the next level of post core init call is arc init call and so on. So far, we covered almost all topics, general implementation, 
ordering and also codes execution. So we will now look at modules and how they are handled. There are two different types of modules. Built-in, which is uh, modules that uh, you put an Y on kconfig, or loadables modules. It's when you put an M uh, in kconfig. Most of the time, modules will not be core drivers. They are not needed for a board to become usable, for example. For that, module underscore init function will be enough because you don't need your function to be executed at early stage of the boot uh, of your kernel. We will see how it's implemented in the code. First of all, we will look at built-in module. In module header, you will find the definition of module underscore init. It's using a function called init call. If you look at the definition of this init call function, in fact, it's using device underscore init call. If you remember the order of the different init calls, device init call is one of them executed at the last stage of the boot process. It means that your built-in module function will be executed at the device level of the boot process later than core related init calls, uh, which is great because most of the time your module will uh, not be core stuff uh, related. About loadable module, in case you didn't use module underscore init uh, function uh, helper, sorry, but an init call uh, helper, such as post core or whatever, in fact, they are uh, replaced by module underscore init definition. Its definition is different from built-in module, um, so we will see. In this case, module underscore init is defined like this. To simplify, it will create a init underscore module function, and this init underscore module function will be an alias to the name of your function. In a script inside the kernel, um, it's uh, adding additional code in a module C file. If you try to compile a module, you will find them in the kernel as mymodulename.mod.c. And if you look at this uh, C file, uh, you will uh, find some code that is adding init underscore module function in dot init section. This is important for the rest, we will see. So finally, in kernel slash module.c file, do underscore init module uh, function is defined. This function will be executed with a syscall at the module insertion. So when you are doing load mode, for example, to load a module, it will execute a syscall um, that will execute uh, do underscore init underscore module function. Its definition is uh, executing a function that we already seen before. Uh, the name is do underscore one underscore init call. If you remember, it was the last function called uh, the one that is executing the function uh, and with all the tracing support uh, between uh, the execution of your function. And for modules, the parameter is the init section of your module. Um, if you remember, we have seen just before, dot init is equals to init underscore module function, which is in fact an alias to your own function. So modules and module underscore init function is in fact reusing what we have seen so far with init calls to execute your function at the last part of the boot process of your, of your kernel. To summarize about module underscore init function, for built-in module, the function will be executed at device level, which is nice uh, because most of the time modules are uh, drivers for devices and not architecture or core stuff. Um, loadable module will execute the function you uh, want to execute at the module insertion. 
using the init calls mechanism we have seen before. Um, it means that if you don't have reasons to execute your function at early stage of the boot process, you should use module underscore init. The benefit of it will be that you will save time uh, consumed uh, for booting your kernel. And most important, it will let more important function being executed earlier than yours. And that's it. Uh, I think we have seen a good overview of init calls. I hope you like it and that you learn how uh, init calls are implemented in the kernel. I will be around for questions and I will do my best to answer you. Uh, thank you for attending my talk and see you around.